What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're we'll going to be checking out a title called Stellar Tactics. This is a tactical RPG. Honestly, it wears a lot of hats. This is a game that's like a mixture of like EVE Online, but you also have like space legs, so you actually have like a tactical team that do like, uh, not like XCOM style combats, but definitely like Baldur's Gate style combats once they go landside in order to accomplish missions and advance the storyline. The game also has sandbox elements. There's like an infinitely repeatable set of dungeons that you can do to farm tokens to get like better gear. And you also find stuff inside the dungeons while you go on through. Uh, there's random pirate fights, so there is ship to ship combat in this game, although it's really, really, really deadly. I've only tried ship combat like twice and the enemy killed me instantly both times. Even though like it said they had one skull so I figured like, oh, a one skull enemy. This is the starting system. I just started the game. Obviously it's gonna be a starter enemy so that I can learn how the space combat works. No, not the case at all. Instantly destroyed by the one skull enemy. So there is space combat, but I haven't got to do very much of it yet because every time I've attempted it, I've been spontaneously combusted by like two shots. And so anyways, Stellar Tactics. It's been in early access for a really, really long time. I've played the game for about four, er uh, probably about four hours, I would say. The game is pretty janky. Uh, and what I mean by that is that this game is clearly low budget and made by a very, very small team that's doing the best with what they have, as is frequently the case with indie games. However, if you can ignore kind of like the visual bugs and the graphical bugs and things that are going to come up while you play the game and just dive on in, I do think that this is a title that actually has a lot of aspirations and it is coming together after like five years in early access. The developers have said that they've pretty much got all the core systems in the game now that are going to be in the game and now they're just working on rolling out storyline and the chapter two of the storyline is slated to come out like in the next month or two from what I understand which represents a big advancement for the game so anyways I played for four hours we're probably so we're not going in from the beginning here uh, because I wanted you guys to see that you can fly around the galaxy and do things uh, but still I'm about four hours in I've got some missions. I'm running my own space mercenary company, handling little jobs for people. Oh, did I mention this game takes place in like a space zombie apocalypse too? Except that like the space zombies won and now they're kind of like sentient and fly spaceships and stuff. It's a weird setting, but the writing is actually quite good. I played through the prologue last night for two or three hours and I don't think I was bored at any point. So that's actually a good sign. We're going to dive on in. We're going to play for about 30 minutes. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Down below you'll find a link to the Steam page for this if you wanted to check it out for yourself. On top of that, you'll find a link down below in the description for my Twitch stream and my Discord in case you wanted to hang out. But let's get to it. We got work to do. So here we are in space. This game is very, very clearly uh, EVE Online inspired, as you can see from the little like turret hard points that are on our like Amar looking ship. I don't know, maybe it's not a Marian. It looks a little, it doesn't have enough like soft edges, but it's not really like Min Matar either. I don't know what this ship would be inspired by. Either way, we've got little turret hard points. We can fly around the galaxy. As of right now, I've just awoken from my cryopod, which I went into slightly before the space zombie apocalypse. And uh, as it turns out, 800 years later, things are not what I expected. And so this is my ship. It's kind of busted right now. I need to get it fixed and we don't have an FTL drive which means that I do not have the ability uh, to fly around this very large galaxy that you see out here with all these planets and all these places and all these things that we can do. Now, I have no idea how much of this is actually populated with real honest-to-God content. Like, I, I don't know how many of these systems actually have things going on inside of them, but when you click on them, it does give you a synopsis, and there do seem to be trade ports... And there do seem to be jump lanes and things inside of each of those. So I'm assuming there's at least some trading to do inside those areas. And more than likely some kind of planetary exploitation or mining. Which this game does have, by the way. I mean, you can space mine. You can space salvage. You can kind of like, once they cut you loose, you can basically do whatever you want in all honesty. But for today, we're going to be chasing down the storyline. So I need to talk to a guy named Scarby Herzog who apparently will lead me to a new FTL drive so that I'm no longer locked inside this system. I'm going to swing a little bit wide right here as we pull up on Achmedus. And then I got to dock at this little station right here. And so we'll give that a go. 
Docking in this game is actually pretty easy. It's not that difficult. You just crash into the side of the station. Nobody seems to mind. It buffs out. You don't have to worry about scuffing your paint. Watch out for the gravity wells, though. The gravity wells kick you out of your slip drive mode, which can be a little bit upsetting. Uh, let's go ahead and approach this place. And after we have approached, we will attempt to dock, and we will go inside, and we will meet fanciful new friends that will guide us to technological superiority. So inside the Spotchy Station, this is my team right here. Uh, these are all mercenaries except for this guy right here, which is my character that I made at the beginning of the game. Everybody's got different specialties. Uh, if you go to their character sheets, this game has a Bethesda-style level-up-as-you-use-it system. Uh, so as you use rifles more, you will get better at rifles. And when you hit certain thresholds, you get to buy perks that make you better at rifles. The same thing goes for first aid. The same thing goes for electronics. And so there's kind of like a Fallout-style granularity here that I'm a big fan of when it comes to the stats of the character. In addition, whenever you hire mercenaries, the game is actually really fair about it. When you hire a new mercenary, uh, they let you apply all their stat points. So you can basically build people to be whatever you want them to be. Our characters right now, my main character is a rifle pistol guy who's also somewhat okay at salvaging. Uh, we've also got Carmen over here. She fights with a giant laser claymore. Uh, we've got Jeffrey DeMarco. I think he specializes in shotguns, I think. What, Jeffrey, what, Jeffrey, what do you have on you right now? What, what equipment do you have? You have a shotgun and you have a pistol, so there you go. And everybody has their own equipment, their own gadgets, their own grenades, their own armor. The game has kind of like a Diablo-style armor system, uh, where the armor mostly seems to randomly generate with various stats on it that increase your attributes or increase your skills or whatever else, which is actually kind of nice. And then finally, I've also got Bradley Simon. Bradley Simon, he's got a giant space sledgehammer. A grav sledge is what they call it. And he's also got an SMG, just in case. You know, just in case he can't get to the enemy to smash him with the grav hammer, we just kind of put that thing on full auto and, brr, 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 you know, feed him the SMG. Uh, but... Scarby something rather is on the space station. I need a flat. I need a. I need a faster than light drive. So let's talk to Scarby Herzog. Scarby, what can I do you for? I'm looking for an FTL drive. I heard about one, but I do know who you can ask that might have one laying around. If you know Scarby, I got a price. What is it? Straight to it. Well, I got a problem with my mine on Achmedus. Got out of hand, and some contractors got ratted up real bad. Mutations and such, not. Seems the air purifiers crapped out on them and they went cheap on no backup systems. They knew what they was in for when they signed up. I'll give you the coordinates. You head over there, clear out the mine, and I'll head you off in the right direction. Mutations? That's right. They're all flesh locked, been exposed to slicing bad air, all wrecked up, not even human now. You best put them out of their misery. It was in their contract. Families get paid out of benefit from insurance. They knew the risks. Here, take a look. You ain't heard of slice. A lot of demand in the core system. Some use it in their chai, others grind it up and snort it. Makes me more per unit than plutonium, but it's illegal as hell to refine, but this is in a raw state right here. Okay, well, I'll take care of it and get back to you. Best be careful. They got mines of mud and skid like stone. Best stock up on that ammo and med kits, and don't wait, just shoot them. Air should be all right now that the mining stop, and you can always stock up at the trade port. Okay, I don't know what I'm looking at on ammo right now, so I've got like... I got some ammo. What do I have for shotguns? I got 170 rounds. I got 170 for pistols. We'll probably be okay. Like, I don't know if there's a world where I'm going to go through, like, 600 rounds of ammo. But you know what? Just because I'm a paranoid guy, I'm going to buy out all the ammo on this vendor right here. Because I exist in a persistent state of paranoia about my preparedness. And so, you know what? We'll just buy, like... 80 of everything just to top it off. Oh, what's that? You saw that missile right there? What if I told you that missile launchers are an easily accessible early game equipment item that you can get? And some characters specialize in basically miniguns, rocket launchers, and giant flamethrowers. Would that be the kind of thing that makes you husky? Okay, well, con commence with the huskiness then. Back out in space, I'm flying around. All right, so we need to go. Man, I feel like I am out of alignment with the rest of the galaxy, right? I feel like I'm like 50 meters below everything interesting that is happening in the universe right now. 
let's clear out the slice mines. Uh, you can easily, it's just like EVE Online. You click where you want to go, what objective you want to go to, you tell it to approach, and it'll put you on a heading to go there. Sometimes there's like a, sometimes there's a, there's like a synopsis of the entire system that comes up over here. I'll let EVE Online as well, and you can select stuff from the list, but I don't know where it went. There it is right there. You click on that. And so it'll give you like every interesting point in this area, including like jump gates and stuff like that. Now you may notice that we're kind of like slow boating right now. Uh, if we wanted to go like a little bit faster, the best way to do that is to hit R. That will allow you to use your slip drive, which allows you to move very, very quickly sublight inside of a system so that you can get in between planets and whatnot. I do find the, the graphics in this game to be pleasant. They're perfectly fine, but they are kind of old school like they are not super modern graphics that look very very you know came out yesterday like they're not RTX enabled but they don't need to be because the game gets it across there's lots of soft lighting effects there's blood effects there's planets flying around you know I found that the game looks pretty pleasant as long as you don't zoom super far in and like look at the models and stuff crazy closely it looks perfectly presentable and I'm happy with the way that it goes a particular note is the soundtrack the soundtrack of this game is quite good. It's a little bit of a bumper. It's very, very, it's very epic. Makes you feel like you're in kind of a sci-fi fantasy epic. All right, so we're pulling up on Achimedes right here. Got about 15,000 somethings left. I doubt that they're AUs, but like, we don't really have a unit of measurement here, so I don't know. Let's go ahead and kick that off right there, and we will scan the planet. Off goes the scan. And there's the slice mine. All right, so let's go ahead and approach. Once we get into the gravity well, we have no choice but to slow boat. We can't use a slip drive inside a gravity well. So it's just something to keep in mind. The game doesn't care if you crash into points either. Like, you can crash into things freely. There's no collision damage. Uh, that's what space combat looks like right there. It is also basically EVE Online, except that you have directional shields. Uh, so you tell your turrets what to target. They target that thing. And then you try to keep your ship in alignment so that, like, your directional shields are blocking stuff. But as I said, all of my forays into space combat have gone incredibly poorly, and I've gotten destroyed basically instantly. I've got shields that are, like, made out of toilet paper. And so anyways, not even just normal toilet paper, like wet space toilet paper. Do we have anything we can interact with over here? Oh, there's a bad guy over here. I seen him. Oh, God, what is that thing, dude? What the hell happened to you guys? Y'all out here looking like thing, dude. Like, we got, like, a Fantastic Four thing happening here. Do they at least take damage? They do take damage, so that's good. If you swap weapons, do you have the AP to fire another shot? Uh, not with decent accuracy, so I'll go ahead and just bypass your turn. How hard do these guys hit? Oh. Oh, not that hard. We'll be okay. Although it kind of depends if they all dogpile me. Uh, I am in melee combat right now, and I'm like a pistol guy. I'm not supposed to be in melee combat. Oh, I leveled up. Nice. Uh, he seems to be somewhat impervious to being shot in the face. This is less than ideal. You swap over to the grav sledge, and let's let him have it. There we go. There's some damage. Okay, all right, all right. I still have my sword lady up, too. Ooh, nine damage on you. Look at you over here being an overachiever. Nice. So we've killed off two of these guys, and apparently we've got 14 of them to take down. I've learned things today. Apparently, when you're stuck inside of a spice mine, you end up becoming kind of a nasty, gross mud monster thing. There you go. Clip them with the shotgun a little bit. All your characters have special abilities. Those special abilities are tied to the gun that you're wielding for the most part. This game does have space magic, in case you're wondering about it. I haven't unlocked it yet. It seems like it's storyline locked. But anyways, there is space magic in this. It's basically psionics. I've heard that it's pretty cool. I've seen videos of people using it, but I personally have not used it. And that's what I mean. Is this one of those games that's kind of like... Oh, you hit that headshot, huh? Nice. Uh, this is one of those games that is very, very clearly made with passion and just like a shoestring budget, basically. Ow, dude, stop punching me. 
Blue Ah to you too. Does this have like a burst fire mode? No, it only has single fire mode. I am largely disappointed with my pistol yields right now. These guys must have like very, very, yeah, that's what it is. So we're doing like 10 damage, but they've got really high kinetic resistance. And it looks like they also have additional armor on top of that. Okay, that's fine. I'm not upset about it. There we go. We dropped another mutant. Let's take a look at our loot here. Uh, this game does a really, really good job with the loot tables. Uh, the loot tables are actually pretty fun in this game. Uh, so you will find consumables, you will find guns, you will find armor, but there's also like junk loot. If you've ever played an MMO, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like rat ogre toenails and stuff like that. This game does have that, but it also has like a motley assortment of just salvage that you find around. Things like wiring, old containers. There seems to be a very large variety of junk items. Uh, so that visually the game to me never really felt like it got boring while I was running around kind of doing things. We got a Halamis civilian MA pistol. It does kinetic damage. I actually, I would love to have a pistol against these guys since they seem to have really high kinetic resistance. It'd be super cool to see if maybe we can get a gun that does something that they don't have a resistance to. I'm trying to level up his pistols for whatever reason. In the beginning of the game, when I played through the prologue, they didn't give me any pistols. And so they only gave me SMGs. And so I leveled my SMGs and my rifles up a whole bunch while I was doing the prologue. But I wanted to be a pistolero. That's what I wanted to be. And so anyways, uh, we've got five stat points that we can allocate here. I would say... Let's raise our range damage, like, through the roof, since I am, like, a dedicated ranged guy. And I don't think anybody else has level ups to play around with, because they're all brand new mercenaries that just joined the company at level one. Your characters do have shields. Uh, you have various equipment. So you've got armor, which adds to your mitigation. You've got shields that basically set your resists and also give you a pool of, like, temporary HP that the enemy's got to get through first before they can hurt you. Oh, where are the bad guy's at? Oh, he's over there. Oh, I didn't even see him. He's, like, hiding back in the corner on this side. Uh, break out the boomstick, dude. Yeah, I think it's boomstick in time. There we go. Get him with that eight damage right there. You can target different parts of the enemy's body for different effects. Uh, if you focus on the limbs and you damage those enough, they end up becoming crippled, which I think lowers their damage a whole bunch or it, like lowers their AP or something like that. Uh, if you go for the head, it basically, if you hit the head, I think it's almost always a crit. And then on top of that, if you go for the body, you have like a really high hit chance. And so it's up to you what you want to do. I grazed his head. Oh, I got to reload. I'm out of ammo. Okay, I will do the reloady boys then. Yeah, that's not bad. I'll take that. Get him with another one. Light him up. And then we'll hit him in the torso with the grab sledge. This guy over here will try to tackle him. There we go. And then we'll also get him with a slam right there. Nice little tremor attack just to deal some extra damage. Uh, all the abilities on your bottom bar, they don't really cost you any AP. So use them freely if it makes you happy. Go ahead and get that guy with the laser sword. There we go. It's not a lightsaber, okay? Because that would put us in copyright infringement territory with the all-powerful Dark Mouse of Dis Disney, and obviously we don't want to mess around with that. Uh, go ahead and use a med kit on yourself real fast just to kind of like level up your first aid, I guess. We don't really need to in Oh, there's a crate back here. Let me see if I can get some sweet loots. Uh, we got five fusion cells, we got some med kits, and we've got some trash loot, basically. Uh, we also got a data log. This game is absolutely chock-a-block with data logs. Uh, I would say a lot of the time when you loot containers and whatnot, there will be data logs that kind of like clue you into things that are happening in the galaxy. Since it is kind of like a foreign setting, and you may not know what's going on a lot of the time, this time it gave us a little bit more of a gap before we had to deal with the enemy. You go ahead and it takes 3 AP to fire that thing, so ideally I'd like to shoot twice. Let's see if we can have 6 AP left. We'll go for some torso blappers. There we go. Oh, there's three of them. Okay. Well, then I have a plan then. We're going to take a frag grenade. 
And we're going to throw that right into the middle of them. Perfect, dude. Softened them up real nice. All right, so you fall back. And I'm going to have the melee guys come out front and just kind of like run blockade. So yeah, you go like right there and put yourself in defensive mode. And you go right there and put yourself in defensive mode. Oh, never mind. The man made up his mind. They want me. They want me the main character. And they want me to suffer. Oh, the shotgun has like a little bit of spread to it. Nice. Unfortunately, I think with the reload, we're not going to be able to... Oh, I have three AP left. Good. Fire one more time. Drop those fools. And then for me, I'm going to go for headshots since I get so many shots per turn. And look at that. We dropped him, dude. Dropped him nice and quick and clean. Another med kit right there. We got a basic Aurelian bulwark personal shield that gives us explosive and kinetic resistance. Not very good. I'll probably just end up salvaging it for parts. This game does have a crafting system. Uh, you can break down all the stuff that you're finding. The junk loot. Uh, the real loot. You can break it all down into component parts like nuts and bolts and wires and things of that nature. And when you do that, uh, you can then take those things and craft fresh gear that has like randomized stats and stuff on it. So that's pretty fun. Uh, I want my sledgehammer guy to be out front. Oh, I've wandered into another combat. Oh, it's spiders this time. Even better. I love dealing with space spiders. All right, we'll go ahead and mag dump that fool. Works for me. How many more spiders are there going to be? The good news is the spiders all kind of ran into... Ooh, a 19 damage crit? Yeah. That's spicy. There we go. There we go. All right. And then we got an Arax Stinger, which I think is just a vendor item. I think we could just, like, sell that. And then we got some Venom over there, too. Not a bad idea, because I am a little bit low on cash, and judging from how bad my space combat has been going lately, I feel like I probably need to buy upgrades in order to make my party actually good at space combat. Where are these spiders at? Oh, there's one right there. There he is. Okay. Well, they didn't close the distance that hard. So I think we'll probably be all right here. Nice little cone of damage right there. I'll take it. Uh, Sledgy, go get him. Oh, wow. That one's actually kind of tough. That guy's like soaking hits right now. I'm actually kind of surprised how much damage he's been able to take to the chin. I'm going to have to reload, unfortunately, on my turn. I do hope that they make it so your guys automatically reload when they get out of combat. I don't think that's a thing right now, though. What do you do with your sword? Automatic critical that bypasses armor? Do it. Nice! And it's got, like, a different... It's got a different animation to, like, run them through, too. Nice. I didn't expect that. I just figured they'd do a normal sword thing. Yup, shotgun that bug. Introduce him to the boomstick, man. Also, reload. That would be a smart thing to do. That's what a good tactical command... I would love to actually see a button... Ah. So I can hit R after combat, I think, if I've got everybody selected and everybody will reload, maybe. Alright, well, there had to be a reason to come back here, right? And fight all these... all these spoders. Is there something out this way? Oh, it looks like there was. Yeah, there's a loot crate over there. Let's go get it. I'm, uh, I'm like, tireless when it comes to getting loot in games like this. It looks like they've just got some barricade right there, which, obviously, because we're video game characters, we can't just jump over the top of it. Uh, we've got a basic Conrare Redoubt combat armor right there. The armors do have different appearances. Uh, there seems to be like three or four different armor appearances from what I've seen so far. Helmets, gloves, boots, those don't seem to show up on your characters. But the main chest piece does, and that's kind of like good enough for me, especially if they've got some really cool like epic armor for later on in the game that has its own unique appearances and whatnot. I know it's a small team, but like there's just these little things about RPGs that if they're not in there... 
I tend to like fall off, I guess. I don't know. Just my personal preference. More ammo and a data card. Ah. Hello, giant rock giant. You're looking particularly giant today. You ever notice that, like, in video games and in movies, all the big buff guys have kind of, like, Incredible Hulk Syndrome, where, for some reason, their pants still fit after they balloon in size? I unfortunately don't have that problem in real life. When I get larger, my pants definitely stop fitting. I feel like it's better to go for the headshots. I think I may go for the headshots in the future. Go ahead and beat that guy with a hammer till he falls over. There we go. And then make like a little blockade over here. Slice him up. Aw, oh, glancing blow. Depression. Sadness. As you can see, the melee guys don't get chunked nearly as hard as the range guys do. That's because there's a stat called Endurance that I mostly neglect on everyone that's not going to be in frontline combat because I figured like... Oh, apparently my gun misfired. That's unfortunate. I didn't know that weapon malfunctions were a thing either. I did notice that the guns had durability, and now I know. Uh, I can break out my rifle, actually, now that I'm at rifle ranges. That's fine. And then we'll finish him off with a sledgy. Bop! There we go. Yes, gah, indeed. I tend to make noises like gah when I get smashed in the face with a hammer the size of a Volkswagen, too. Uh, I already got the loot that's over there. There's a backpack down here with another personal shield inside of it. That's good. Uh, there are three meters on each character. They are shield points, hit points, energy points. That's pretty much it. Shield points and hit points, pretty self-explanatory. The energy points, I haven't figured out how those factor in. I assume they're for, like, special attacks and, like, psychic stuff, but... I don't know. They seem to go down from time to time when I'm in combat, but haven't investigated too much further. I'm definitely getting attacked in here. They put the loot right there, which means that I'm gonna... Yep, I'm gonna go for the loot, and then I'm gonna get attacked, because I know my video games. Uh, it says there's five more of these guys that I gotta deal with. Oh, that guy's got a gun. Huh. Oh, boy. This, to me, seems very much like a frag grenade type situation. Like, I don't want to frag grenade my way out of this. But I will if I have to. Yeah, I guess just get to the smacking. His special ability is off cooldown, so I could use that. Hey, you killed him. Nice. Look at you over here just being an absolute compliment to the team. Don't you just love it? You know, I kind of feel like throwing another frag grenade is something that I'm really in tune with. Like, the enemy has had to group up in a really unfortunate way for this fight. And so I feel like clearing out all the random mooks is a really good idea. And then we chase this guy down, and then we just, like, laser sword him repeatedly until he no longer feels motivated to shoot me with that large blocky rectangle he's got in his hands. Oh no, he has grenades too. That's reasonably unfortunate. That pleases me like none. Yeah, shoot him with the thermal shells, I guess. Go ahead and swap over to your SMG. Like, I definitely think we need to kill this guy, like, today. It's odd that he can throw a grenade in melee base contact. Wow, he's got a lot of armor. 
I'm actually sort of concerned right now. Maybe I'll run a med kit on myself. Just to make sure somebody stays in combat. At this range, is this like bad rifle ranges? Oh, this is somewhat okay rifle ranges. Let's give him a burst fire. There you go. Ten. Wow, he is not taking damage at all. This man does not care. There's a nice hit. There we go. He still gets another turn, though. And if he has another grenade, this is really going to suck. Luckily, he did not have another grenade. But let's go ahead and fan out and see if we can find him here. There we go. Just give him the bonk. Uh, the mines are now clear. We can go back to Dar or Scarby or whatever his name. Ooh, an even better hat. The Aralian Thunderstorm Edged Great Club. Oh, yeah, the weapons are moddable in this game, too. In case you're into all that Tarkov stuff. Uh, every advanced weapon in this game has, like, mod slots. And you can mod the accuracy, you can mod the damage, you can mod the element, you can mod all kinds of things. And that's really, I think, what caught my eye about this game. Is that, like, it's more than meets the eye. Like, yes, it is a little bit clunky, and yes, it is a little bit janky. But, the breadth of things you can do inside of this game, from space mining, to crafting, to modding your guns, to space magic, to randomized missions, to procedurally generated dungeons, uh, to actual storyline missions, to ship-to-ship -ship combat, to boarding combat. Like, there's so many things in this game that, to me, it kind of makes up for, like, the bugginess and, like, the random things that I've come across as I've played the game. Like, absolutely, I've had some visual bugs. Absolutely, I've had a quest bug out on me. Like, absolutely, there are rough edges on this title. It doesn't have the best animations. You know what I mean? It doesn't have the best, you know, portrait selection. It doesn't have, like, this is very, very clearly a game that's made by, like, two people. But it's a game made by two people that it's obvious they really, really care about this. And they're trying to make something special. And so anyways, that's what made it a lot easier to give the go-ahead and squeeze the trigger on featuring the game. It's just because, like... I can tell that the developers of this game care just from the amount of detail that's in the game. And so anyways, I reckon this is an icon pack. I recognize this. I definitely recognize that icon from like another game and I can't think what game it was that I recognize it from. I feel like I recognize the hacking tool graphic too, but maybe I'm just crazy. Uh, for hacking, who's going to be our hacker? What stat takes hacking? Dexterity. Who has our best dexterity? So you have five. He has seven. It actually looks like my character might be the best fit for a hacking tool. So I will put that hacking tool on him. There we go. Auto hack it. One... Wait, how did I fail the hacking? Try it again. So we gotta hit a one. We gotta hit a one. We gotta hit a four. We gotta hit a four. There we go. Hacking was successful. Looks like we've got a whole bunch of bullets and some brand new shoes. And I leveled up my hacking. Oh yeah. I'm all up in your VPN doing a hacksaws. I am officially anonymous. Uh, I would like it if after you cleared a dungeon, a little thing would pop up that just says return to your ship so that I can click on it instead of having to walk back through the dungeon. It's like a minor detail, but if the dungeons aren't going to have loopbacks in them that take you back to the beginning when you get done clearing them on out, a button that does something similar would be really, really nice. And I'm kind of looking around the UI right now because I'm terrified of looking like an idiot if it actually exists. Well, I went through every icon that's currently on the screen, and I don't see one. So I'm going to tentatively say that it's not there, but still, I could be wrong. Wasn't exactly a super in-depth look. But back to Ogmetus, we got to go talk to Scarby, and then we get our FTL drive, which will allow us to leave the system and go to the greater spaces. Yeah, I've enjoyed my time with the game so far. I, I had read how long the prologue was before I dove in last night, and I was like, ugh. 
Like, you can skip the prologue if you don't want to go through it, but the prologue does give you a lot of loot and a lot of equipment. Uh, and it also gives you, like, a lot of tutorializing for how all the systems work, like what crouching does and stuff like that. And so if you're looking to learn the game, it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and do the prologue. And the prologue does have a decent storyline, uh, but it did bug out on me. You see this, you see this uh, objective right here? Find the green key card. I never found the green key card. It said I couldn't advance without the green key card. And then I just like went up to a door and it like let me through even though I didn't have it. And so anyways, like I said, some rough edges on this one. I don't know how I'm ever going to get that out of my objective list, but you guys know me. I'm a big fan of anything that has to do with, like, you know, space epics, uh, things like Mass Effect, stuff like, uh, you know, Freelancer, EVE Online, Elite Dangerous. I like, I like all of those games in their own way. And so, anyways, I, I do feel this game kind of tantalizing that itch. In fact, that's probably what I would call it. It's somewhere in between, like, EVE Online and Mass Effect. Like, I know it's a, a weird two games to compare, but, like, the space combat feels a lot like EVE Online combat. You orbit, your turrets auto-fire, and eventually someone dies. And then you've also got kind of, like, the away team stuff that you can do where you're, like, crawling around facilities like we just did, killing enemies and scooping up loot and doing the action RPG thing, which gets a little bit more hack-and-slashy. And so, anyways... I really, I really feel like a cross-section between, like, EVE Online and Mass Effect is kind of what the game's got going for it. But the game is not done. That's the thing that we should be clear about. This is a small team working on a super ambitious project that has, like, tons and tons of things to iron out and add. They've said that they got most of the core gameplay mechanics in at this point, and they're starting to work on the actual storyline campaign itself. And so that's kind of where they're at. The second chapter of the story drops in, like, a month or so from what I read on the Steam forums. But thus far, I'm actually kind of impressed with what this tiny team has accomplished with this game. Stellar Tactics. Check it out. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what is worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Stellar Tactics. Tomorrow we will have something else. Thank you for sharing your time with me, and I will catch you all later. Bye, folks.